Hey guys, in this video we are going to install Solark 15K with EG4 PowerPro battery and 14 solar panels, 405 watts each panel. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. And here's the roof, we're gonna have panels on the three different locations. Here's the first one, here's the second one and on the right side is the third one. We don't have much space to install more panels, so 14 panels is about limit size for this roof. For roof attachment we're using Flashfoot 2 and the XR rails. Panels on this part of roof is gonna be installed in a portrait and landscape mode and there we have one individual panel and we need to run EMT conduit to protect PV wire from sun exposure. Whenever I'm using conduit bender on a roof I always making sure that handle is not directly touching the roof. I always using cardboard or plywood so shingles is not gonna be damaged. After running all conduits we can start to run PV wires. On the roof we need to use 10 gauge wires and 6 gauge bare copper wire for grounding. After running all wires it's time to lift panels up and start installing them. first day we did install these panels did conduit and wires for that one and uh, did install those panels this is junction box from J box and uh, it has two drain holes at the bottom however it was mounted upside down on the rails and um, just for the one night it's already collected some condensation water so I'm going to drill two holes to allow drainage Last step here is to paint conduit and flashing. I'm not covering shingles anymore because in one month uh, paint is going to be faded and it will blend with shingles. This is a junction box with all the wires. And here's a main electrical panel with 100 amps breaker and it's feeding sub panel in a garage. It's going to be easier to do full home backup because we don't need to move any loads from main electrical panel because it's just one single breaker. When I'm installing AC disconnects and the electrical panels, usually I'm removing front covers so it's not gonna be so heavy. Because for example double throw switch weight is about 70 pounds. At least it's gonna be a little bit lighter without front cover. Right next to main electrical panel I'm going to install a single throw AC disconnect. All wires between AC disconnects, main electrical panel and solar unit will go inside the garage. We have unfinished walls there and uh, it's gonna be much cleaner if we run cables in the wall. And uh, here's a 200 amp double throw switch. We're going to use this to switch power to sub panel from solar to grid just in case we need to service inverter. We're gonna have EG4 Power Pro battery wall mounted and uh, it's pretty straightforward installation. Watch your shadow. 
we can buy WireWay or Gather Box for EG4 battery and it's going to work with EG4 18K inverter. However, for Solar Arc we cannot use it because it has custom knockout. So I'm going to use Nemo 3R rated WireWay 12x12x24 and will make it work for EG4 battery and Solar Arc 15K. Solark bottom clearance should be 6 inches for cooling and uh, I'm going to use conduit hubs and close nipples so we're gonna get about 6 inch distance between wireway and Solark. First attempt to install Solark failed because it has too close distance between knockouts and conduit hubs hitting each other and not allowing to sit properly. But of course everything can be fixed with angle grinder. I'm using a lot of sealant to waterproof nipples that are going to go through the wall. And here's a view from a garage. I'm gonna have same 2 inch nipples for a double throw AC disconnect that's gonna go through the wall. And on the back side from double throw, we're just gonna go through the studs and exit to single throw, which is right here. What is interesting, I don't know what is the year this how it was built, but here is a true two by six studs, two inch by six, not like one and a half and three and a half as we see right now in a building supply store. What is interesting that depth for hole saw is not enough to drill to this real 2 inch stud. Now I'm going to crimp two old cables from EG4 batteries to Solar. Now I'm going to start wiring and uh, connect EG4 battery to inverter. Connector's covers is too long and it's hard to attach to the battery. But if we remove cover from connector, connect to the battery and then screw it back, it's gonna be much easier. In the Solark manual it's saying that we cannot use impact driver to torque nuts for the batteries. However, I'm doing just a few clicks and uh, then finishing the uh, nuts with a torque wrench. Next step is to connect communication cable. 
and the EG4 Power Pro battery can communicate with the Solark unit via CAN bus. And now time to exercise. I'm going to run this two old cable between the AC disconnects and the Solark unit. And uh, here's the finished double throw. On the left side, we have input from main electrical panel or from single AC disconnect. It's going to these insulated connectors. Then from insulated connectors, once one way is going to um, this source of double throw and the other is going to solar unit. In the solar unit, it's coming to the grid and uh, on the load side, it's coming back and connected to this side. So now with this lever, we can switch to off position, which is right here, or in the up position, we're going to switch to the grid power. In the bottom position, we're going to switch to solar output. And now I'm going to connect PV wires and I'm going to utilize three PV inputs. The most annoying thing about solar is that it doesn't have built-in transmitter for rapid shutdown. Most of the inverters support in some spec protocol, so we don't need to run separate coil and the install transmitter. But with the solar, we have to provide 12 to 24 volts for transmitter to make rapid shutdown work. And uh, for power adapter, we cannot take power from anywhere from here. So even we have 240 volts or 120 between neutral and any leg, we have to run separate wire for uh, power. And here's the MC cable. And we have to run this uh, wire from sub panel all the way to solar to make it work. So this is really annoying. Hopefully solar will fix this soon. So it's going to be less wires to run and a little bit cleaner installation. But here's the MC cable and the 120 volts power in the gather box to power AP smart transmitter. Now we need to remove wires between main panel and sub panel and install new cable which is going to go from main to AC disconnect. And it took about one hour to run this cable here and connect all of this together. And here's a sub panel with removed wires from main panel. And here's the new wires coming from double throw switch. Here is an interesting item how rules were changing over the time. On the left side, we have wire that uh, main panel was connected to sub panel for 100 amps. And on the right side, it's one old cable that is required today. For communication with the solar, we have to follow this procedure and switch profile to uh, solar P03. To make it work, on the left side, we have deep switches. We need to turn all of them on on BMS, then press and hold this button for 5 seconds, and now we can select we can protocol to solar. Okay. Now we can shut this down and 
switch, deep switches. Only first should be on, the first battery, and now it's switched to the solar. And now exciting moment, we can turn our system on. System is generating 900 watts right now, and uh, it's really cloudy, so not bad for this kind of weather. For battery communication, we have to enable BMS lithium battery profile 00, and we got all of this information from EG4 battery. Final step is to install all covers, and the uh, installation is done. Alright guys, that's all about this video, I hope you'll find something useful here. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, and as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.